picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Welcome back. It is, let's see, Monday, Tuesday. It is Wednesday, and I am putting the final touches on the Nautilus base. I've just put some white uh, canopy glue down and sprinkled some of the railroad moss over the glue and letting it dry. And then once it does, I will dust it off because you always put too much on and then you blow off what doesn't stick. But I have dull coated or dust coated the, uh, uh, the sub. I am going to go back in with a, with the uh, clear gloss. Uh, um, it's, I guess it's to, it's a, to me a clear, and just hit some spots on the uh, squid or octopus. Uh, I don't know the name of nomenclature. They both got eight legs, as far as I understand it. The cephalopod. Let's just call it that. And. Um, I may have gotten some overspray of the dust on it, and I want to make sure it's all nice and glossy, so I'll go in with a brush and touch that up. But first, I will let this uh, uh, mossy stuff dry in there, and then, like I say, blow it off. But I've put some little plants and some shells and some other ornamental things on there. And uh, what you didn't see is I also have put the... Um, the felt on the bottom like I always do. So that's been taken care of. And then it's time for it to uh, uh, get the bottle broke over it and set it out to sea because it will be done. Well, welcome back. It is Thursday. And as if the hurricane of last week was not enough of a clue, uh, we're getting into that time of year when uh, weather is not predictable. And uh, it starts to get chilly in the morning, and uh, a good day is a rarity and a thing to be treasured. So those are the days I do the priming. And since today is one such day, and it's a beautiful day outside, I need to go ahead and get the... I'm working on the bat wing, and I bet you, bet you thought I'd forgotten this. No, working on the bat wing, and I need to uh, get this big Mamma Gemma sprayed. I need to spray it with the, uh, the black primer. Uh, to get it down the road further so that when I start doing the top coats of black uh, with the airbrush, I don't have to do the covering as well as the finish. I can concentrate on the finish because the covering will be handled by the primer. And we are also uh, getting into the next project. And I'm calling this the black and white because as black as this is going to be, this is going to be as white. Yes, I am tackling the uh, Enterprise. Actually, no, I'm tackling the Excelsior. Um, when round two re-released the Excelsior kit, people were asking me, where are my templates for it? Well, I make a template for the Enterprise B. I said, well, you know, you can use that and do some alterations. But then, you know, once I got into it and looking at it and people started, you know, nicking, nitpicking me at it, I realized, yeah, there's enough of a difference here in the two designs to make it worth making a separate uh, uh, template set strictly for the Excelsior. Um, the paint on the blue is different. Uh, what areas are painted and what are not. Plus I need to um, account for the decals that are made this time around. So let me show you a little history of excelsior ising Okay, here you have um, a couple different generations, no pun intended, of Excelsior slash Enterprise B kits. Let me move the uh, bat plane off to the side for a second. Um, first of all, we have the uh, Excelsior kit that I painted way back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I mean back in the day. Uh, this was done probably very quickly or very soon after it was originally released back in the 80s. I guess it was the 80s because it came out about the time of uh, Search for Spock, which was the first time the Excelsior was, uh, was a model. And as you can tell, I wasn't that good back then. Um, I, the fact that I've kept it all these years is more of a testament to how compact and everything fits than it is uh, as to how sentimental I am about its uh, it, it as a kit. But um, as you can see, 
not too shabby for a you know a ham-fisted goon that I am uh, back in like I say way back in the early days so this was the uh, Excelsior now if I recall back then if I'm remembering correctly uh, this was the only option. You could not make the NX2000. You made the Excelsior, the NCC2000. And that was fine. I mean, it was a good enough kit. It was, it was Like I say, for some reason, they made these clear. There was never any intent to light those. Uh, it wasn't lit on the kit. I don't know why. But you see some uh, very rudimentary model building here. Now, when they re-released the kit as... The Enterprise B. Um, this is the Enterprise B with my template set that I devised for it. And you can see in the intervening years I got a lot better at making models. Uh, the paints, the painting is a lot more uh, intricate. The craftsmanship is a little bit better as far as making sure all the seams are covered. Uh, you can still see a nasty Nasty seam there, but uh, that was the that was the old. This is the new, and uh, you can see the seams are a little bit more carefully taken care of. But with the re-release or the new release of the Excelsior kit, I get to do something that I didn't get to do before, which is to make a true NX version of the model, which is what I'm going to do. It's got this different uh, shuttle bay deck that goes on the back. I mean, I, I heartily congratulate them on what they've done to to make this not simply a repop of a kit, which would have been easy enough to do, but no, they fixed the errors on the uh, uh, on the on the uh, saucer. They got rid of the stair steppedness here. Uh, of course, they had to since this was the uh since it was the enterprise b they had to take off those extra impulse engines that aren't here on the Enter on the nx or on the excelsior and generally make it look better uh so i wanted to bring these two out to show you that yeah i know my way around the excelsior i've done it a couple of times so what i am choosing to do on this is all strictly uh matters of choice as it were um so let me clear the desk off and get back to the the one model at hand you can kind of see the underbelly of the bat plane it's got a coat of the black sandable primer on it and I'm gonna let this sit for a good long while because the black sandable primer like most flat black paints uh, if you don't let it dry it can be a bit chalky and rub off on your hands and smudge and things like that which I don't want to do and I have pre primed well, I guess the only priming, so it's not a pre-prime, it's a, it's a priming, but pre-painting some of the areas on the Excelsior that, uh, and I'm never going to stop doing that throughout the entire time I'm building it, so get used to it now. Uh, this actually, this deck is going to be a two-tone gray, and I am going to want to uh, put down, this is actually going to be the color of the darker details, so... I am going to put some uh, Aztecs over top of that and then protect it again from when I paint the white around it. So this, this is actually top coat or finish coat. But uh, let me see. Things like this. Like these pieces, I could never understand why they made them clear to begin with because they were never going to be lit. They were always supposed to be gunmetal, but yet they cast them in clear. So... Uh, had to be painted, so painted I did. And things like this, the uh, little uh, ribbed nonsense that goes above the pylon support. And the same as the neck. But the thing about spraying it with a, a primer is that you really get to see where the joints need to be sanded and smoothed out. These have always been, this model has a history of troublesome joints. Uh, these being one of them because you have to kind of blend all of that ribbing which never quite works out and they do the same problem here and on this i mean they're all have that rib detail but yet they all split down the center with a seam and 
sometimes it's hard to guess you know why they would do that but there really isn't any other way around it so those are sitting and this is uh what i'm going to do for the inside here is i'm just going to put those pieces in as they go like that and then kind of uh block that off from the the white painting so that you see that gray left inside so i may do some of that detail painting maybe some smoke or some uh washes in there to accentuate those details before i put this piece in and then i'll put something to cover it all over so that it doesn't get messed up when i put the white paint on and here's a flipped over the bat plane so you could see the the nice wings on it and this will get buffed with a uh, very very high grain sandpaper to get it ready for its uh, body color and as we pull the curtain down on Thursday night we see a big old black bat plane uh, say that five times fast black yeah you can't do it either um, as you can see it's a lot of black and black is kind of boring so the next task is to find ways to make the details pop um, and uh, that's going to be easier on like sometime, uh, like the inside of the hatches on landing gears and things like that so I just need to come up with a good finish that uh, will add some life and luster to this and on the other hand we have the Excelsior and uh, you can see I still have the preliminary uh, shading, preliminary uh, priming done with not a lot of other work to show for it. Good morning. It is Friday and it's the final work day of the week. Although, uh, no, I think I'm going to try to get back on schedule and just uh, work a bit today and then put up a video. It may be a little bit shorter than normal. But here is... Uh, victim number one, which is the bat plane. Now, um, it's a lot of black. It's a lot of black on black. And I'm going to try to do things to, to help mitigate that. But one of the things I'm going to do is, uh, right now, is the inside of all of these doors. And the wheel wells, uh, the, the landing gear wells, the weapons base, things like that, that I'm going to be doing in aluminum. Uh, uh, not real bright chrome but a metallic that is different enough from the black to give some interest. And that involves also getting the engines, uh, turbines put into the engines and getting them painted. So that's job one today. And I am also working on painting templates for the Excelsior, uh, which involve, um, since this is the first chance I've really had, or that you've really, that one, that the model maker has really had to make a true NX uh, kit that's the version I'm going with. Now, I'll be making templates for the other sections as well, for the other, most notably, the other uh, shuttle bay section. But um, I'm going to be making templates for these and for the uh, the blue areas. What my uh, I, what my goal is, this is, this is my stated goal, and you'll have to forgive me. I've had two cups of coffee this morning. Um, I'm going to... Once I get these all the templates designed and measured and ready to go, is to paint, of course, primer on this, but paint the blue areas, paint a generous swath of blue all over this. And then we will be putting templates down to protect the blue areas, to keep them blue so that when we put the white or the very light gray over top of them, they will in fact stay blue. It's easy. That's the easiest way to do it rather than to try to paint the blue on top of uh, the white because you've got like very thin areas between plates, uh, you know, between the blue areas where there should be white and that white trim around the edge. It's just going to be easier to paint that by painting the blue first and then covering it up. That's the goal. So I am doing a lot of cutting and measuring and trying those out but while I'm doing that I can be letting these big parts of the bat plane uh, dry okay I am ready to start spraying some metallics and because that means engaging with my mortal enemy again the enamel metallic uh, metalizers 
That means I get the gloves out. I've got the fan exhausting. I've got the breath mask ready to put down. Otherwise, wrapped up and insulated to within an inch of my life. And now, uh, start spraying some, I think I'm gonna go with a steel and then highlight it with some, uh, or maybe a magnesium and then, or stainless steel, a lot of stainless steel and then maybe a highlight of aluminum on this um, engine block. Okay, I have metalized the life out of these parts and while I was at it I also did the parts of the Excelsior that uh, also need uh, metal, uh, need the gunmetal color uh, and now since I've sprayed everything with the metalizer and then the metalizer sealer which is I think the thing I'm the most allergic to I will uh, go strip down and give myself a good silkwood shower and uh, let this stuff dry for a few hours. So as we get ready to wrap up the week's work on the bat plane, I find myself at the exact place I did not want to be, which is having a plane that is basically flat black and silver. Uh, nothing more boring. So now I need to find a way, now that I've got the blacks defined and I've got the silvers defined, um, I need to find a way to make this look more interesting either by putting a texture on the black or coming up with some funky color that I can put over top of it and I need to uh, uh, age up the, the silver bits so that they don't look so uh, toy-like uh, so that's uh, I got a bunch of overspill, which is another thing when you're hand painting silver, it has a tendency to run all over. So I got to clean that up. Um, but we are a fur piece down the road on the bat plane. Shouldn't take too much longer to finish this up. Again, because I don't have the interior. So can't do much with it with an interior that you don't got. But it'll make a nice uh, sitting on its. Uh, sitting on its uh, landing gear display with no interior anyway and of course once the actual kit comes out and hits the shelves I'll be picking up another one to go you know whole hog on but for this for now this is uh, more of a test bed than anything else and it'll allow me to get back onto the uh, Excelsior and get to that project this weekend I'll probably work on some making some templates for that while I am uh, spending my weekend. Okay, and here is the, wow, it sounds better in here already. Here is the building update for this week. As you can see, we've got insulation. Well, the beginnings of insulation. They, uh, the gentleman came over this, morning, this afternoon, said they were going to start, <laughs> and then they'd finish up tomorrow. Well, they got... <laughs> A pretty good chunk of it done. Uh, not much left to do. Uh, insulation goes over top all of those baffles and insulation goes under the floor and the vapor barrier goes down but uh, just a few bays left to get filled and the echo in this room is already gone. There was an echo in here that when it was big and empty but now it's not big and empty anymore so yay and here are the windows. I will have to go ahead and say, hey, not the most expensive windows. They're kind of chimp, cheesy, but uh, they open and close like they're supposed to. And then they have a nice breeze. And it already feels, I hate to say it feels warmer in here, but it does. I need to leave that open so they can get in and out. And we've got that area closed off. Ready for the brick wall to come out. See, the reason the brick wall isn't out yet is... Uh, energy and it's getting cold here at night and you don't want to be pumping energy out because I'm still living here I don't want to be pumping dollars of heating out of here into an empty hole but now that it's insulated uh, they can go ahead and tear that stuff off and finish that wall so yay lots of progress this week I mean not big showy stuff but what the heck it's working uh, the building went up last week a week ago today, Hurricane Matthew was blowing through Florida. So, uh, uh, and I had, all I had up were uh, shingles. But now we've got walls, insulation, and uh, windows. So 
Yay, progress is progress. Look, JJ, I make my own lens flare. Woo! And that's going to do it for this week. Uh, lots of work done on the bat plane. Uh, once you get to it, there's not a lot. It's just black paint. Like I said, my mission now is to make that black paint interesting. So we'll try out some stuff over the weekend, see how it goes. And Excelsior! Yes, I'm going to continue saying that. Um, coming along nicely, doing some basic construction and uh, painting while I had out the demon enamels. And I'm airing out the room now and getting all of the, uh, exhausting all of the, the demon enamel uh, fumes out. And uh, I'll get to work on making the templates for the Excelsior uh, this weekend. I'll do a little bit of work on it. Hopefully Monday we'll hit the ground running with that. Um, finishing up on the house, finishing up insulation tomorrow. On a Saturday even they said they were coming. So praise be for that. Um, and then next week we should be into drywall and finishes. Won't that be fun? And the big thing will be by taking that brick down. And I'm, I'm eager to see that. I've been wanting to see that since day one. So uh, uh, I'll be sure to carry you along with me as I do that. So until next week, uh, stay warm, stay dry. Um, stay in touch with your loved ones. Have a good week. Be good to each other. And we'll see you back here next time.